assistants Nick and Joe A surgeon reporter of his drone For the cassette that is on the home But in the meantime The play the greatest clips they VCR party Tuesday night. It's time to party on with the VCR boys. I'm in the office. We have 11,487 VHS tapes here. I'm joined by Nick. By the way, my name's Joe. That's Nick. There's George and there's Steve. And we're the VHS boys with a Z. It's a big week uh, here at the VCR party headquarters. We're about to take off on a big nationwide tour uh, starting in Los Angeles. Uh, we're leaving tomorrow morning and uh, we got shows uh, Thursday, Friday in L.A. And then uh, all over the place, uh, San Francisco, Denver, Chicago, Madison, uh, Austin and beyond uh, with Chop and Steel, the movie they made about us. So I'm going to show a clip from that later, but uh, we ought to start off with the Found Footage Festival classic. Oughtn't we? Oughtn't we? You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. Okay. By the way, yeah. by the way, if you want to see Chop and Steel, you go to chopandsteel.com. Steel, S-T-E-E-L-E dot com, and you can buy tickets there. You come see us. It's a fun website too. Uh, yeah, it's and uh, so one of the places you can see us is in San Francisco this Saturday. We're playing the Alamo Draft House there, beautiful theater and uh, and bar there. There's a video store there, and uh, I was uh, Joe. We were talking about like what clip could we play from San Francisco to promote that show, and you said it's got to be skateboard surfing. Happening. No, I said it's got to be something happening i mean something's oh. happening was my first choice oh, that's okay the, that's the ultimate but i feel like it's one of those that we play too much i see uh, okay and then, <laughs> yeah and, All right. and then you you suggested skateboard surfing i got i got a little excited about it actually it was an option well i don't normally yeah. play this part of it so here we're going to see the most san francisco in mickey the clown's video skateboard surfing say listen exercise is a very important part of life you know where i get mine right here in golden gate park in beautiful san francisco by the bay say listen we're gonna do a little skateboard surfing today are you say listen put everything on here we go put everything on Where the kids are cool, they got a oh, way to get skateboard loose. surfing. When they get I out put everything school, on. Skateboard surfing. Skateboard surfing. Oh, here's that right the skateboard. Yeah. Tell your pa. Never does a trick. Skateboard surfing. He's on it there. It's a little wobbly though. Yeah. <laughs> Things allowing <laughs> rollerbladers to go around you, right? Now remember yeah. when you're out there skateboarding oh, or surfing, like cover up everything wear a helmet cover your nose cover your toes knee pads and elbows we want you around for a long time have fun remember yes skateboard surfing's not against the law you're hurting me mickey <laughs> that's like how i play with my cat so i make my yeah. cat <laughs> Dancing with her like she's a ventriloquist dummy or something. Oh, that's what he's not writing it. <laughs> that's what Joe was doing with me when he was on mushrooms. <laughs> kind of like making your arms flail around. Yeah. That was the whole night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a great time. I don't know. So I think we got to go to Golden Gate Park with a skateboard and do some skateboard surfing. And you know what? Melinda's out there in the Bay Area. Come join us at the park. We'll we'll do some skateboard surfing. Although we'll never actually get on the skateboards. No, you just you just carry it around and maybe you stand on it, but you don't move on it. Yep, yep. that's the plan. So uh, hope to see you there. Steve, who are you selling out to? Well, Joe, I'm glad you asked. Uh, today I am selling out for David from Flushing. David and his friends Perry and Ariana are looking for some fun Melindas in the Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island area that are looking to play tabletop games. They're into all sorts of games as well as RPGs. Uh, contact is above me, Flushing Friends and Gaming at gmail.com if you're interested. Uh, come out to Flushing. They have some of the best food in the country and play with fun people. Uh, in Flushing, KFC stands for Korean Fried Chicken. And behind me is a picture of some of the games that they choose to play. And I haven't told David this yet, but I'm planning to go out there. 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I love that great commute. Games. Yeah, yeah. I would go out there. Train? It takes me like an hour and a half to get out there, but they do have incredible food out there. Flushing is like it. the the best food out there. And I wonder if that's David from Flushing who uh, makes the uh, he oh, sends the packages and puts the collages on them. Yeah, and, uh, I don't yeah. know. If so, he's a cool dude. Uh, so, I'll report uh, back, but we may have to decide. Uh, we have to see if he's cool. Because if Joe and I are ever at the same place playing a game, it becomes the most competitive thing in the world. And yeah, it's often not fun for other people. Yeah, I don't really care about the other people, though. I care more about. Uh, <laughs> I don't even care about winning. I just make sure that you lose, like no. that you worse that you no. lose worse than me. Well, usually I win, so it, it ends up working well in my favor. But you know, well, if you want to play a game with Joe and Steve, email uh, <laughs> Brooklyn Enemies and Gaming at gmail dot com, and uh, that's the style that they they play. I think that I'm the same way with you too, Nick. I'd never mm-hmm. want to lose to you, and. Uh, George, I think I'm indifferent about losing to you. Thanks. <laughs> I've Actually, always no, said that I, you never view me as a threat in any way. <laughs> I, I expect no. I expect you to win because you're the smartest person that I've ever that I've ever known. Um, Good yeah. Save See, that, you tra- this yeah. flattery. That's your strategy. But remember when you kicked <laughs> my ass in ping pong? But you only got into it when I started to do okay. Oh yeah. Well yeah. Right. Well, and it's a fair fight. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not into that. Well, let's uh, uh, highlight some of our favorite uh, uh, production companies. Well, one in particular uh, called Scimitar. Here we go. This Week in Scimitar. All right. We got a first here. This is... Uh, the first time we've ever done a movie, I think, well, no, we did Pinocchio's birthday party, but that was a 45 minute movie. But this is a feature length movie from 1973 called Pigs that uh, look at this. This is Scimitar. Here's the, the logo there, the unforgettable logo. But the uh, yeah, the the cover just caught my eye. Pigs. Um, I just got this on Amazon for 50 cents uh, because I was looking for more Scimitar tapes. And uh, it's a, a horror movie. Stars a soap opera act- actor at the time, and uh, there's only two scenes with pigs in it. They really skimp on the uh, pigs, um, even though it's about uh, cannibalistic pigs. It, you only see them twice. So it's a little clip I cut together. I watched the whole thing. It's uh, pigs. <laughs> Pleasant way to start a movie. They're not even in the same room. No. Ended episode. She's having a nightmare. This is my favorite scene. She's dancing by herself in a diner. This is what in, in the movie industry they call this filler. Oh, this whole yes. movie is this filler. Is and the fact that there's a scimitar was taped in uh, EP mode, so the colors are really, it's way, like, way too dark. You can barely see anything in this movie. Oh, because it's also EP and dub of a dub of a dub. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right. This is real nice and friendly up here. You know, Nick, so this is the uh, this yes. is the same company that put out Kids Aerobics. Kids yeah. Aerobics, same uh, company. Yep, same one. Put out yep. uh, pigs. Yep. Yep. And so cyber sex on the internet. Yeah. Here, she's picking up a hitchhiker here. The guy lived, especially as big as I am. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of you. You remind me of my daddy. <laughs> driving music <laughs> i think there's a mouth harp in there at some point um yeah so that's uh that's pigs with a cover that's far better than the movie but uh i think we might have broken new ground in this week in scimitar was, was that a spoiler at the end like picking up the hitchhiker and driving away to a song like is that a spoiler um yes it is i oh, gave away shit. the ending to the movie yeah sorry oh, everybody yeah yeah, yeah right. i apologize um, hey, I want to do uh, my new favorite segment called Cry of the Karachi. It's based on uh, CJ Karachi. We have a ton of his tapes. And uh, man, I just, I, I don't know. I'm a big fan. 
Welcome. Let's get it! Yep, we call him the crotch. And uh, so here he is. He uh, does a lot of exercise videos. Uh, he's a former Navy SEAL. And I think he makes it up as he goes along. And he mm -hmm. kind of rambles and there's no script. And uh, it's beautiful. Here it is. Feel your body, as Bruce Lee would say. Feel. Now, until we can get those laser guns and the plasma guns and Arnold's guns firing. Incongruous music. about this grass, huh? Huh? Brother Andre's house. Beauty. <laughs> Beauty. The brother Andre Andre Karachi? <laughs> Andre Karachi. <laughs> hey, we can find him. We can talk to him. I'm sure he's attainable. I'm sure CJ is, but I, I think I'd be a little scared of him. I don't know. I'm yeah, a little... Former weak. Navy SEAL. Yeah. Um, movie references? It's terrifying. Uh, no, you know what? Yeah, actually, he might be cool. Because he, he does reference, like, Austin Powers and, uh, yeah, Bruce Lee and stuff. Like, he might be cool. Let's try it. Let's give him a shot. I think, George? uh... Well, I'll look by let's, uh, we mean George. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not, by us, we mean George. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Joe, you, we, you know, you, we see behind your um, uh, desk where you're sitting every week. So we just see a small collection of the videos. Uh, but in uh, Chop and Steel, you get to see kind of a tour of the whole office. It's it's the old office, but it's the same idea, where it's just wall-to-wall -wall videos. So I just pulled a clip from the Chop and Steel documentary. Like, uh, if you're on a talk show, you'd show maybe a movie clip. That's what this is. I thought people might be curious to see some of what they'll see in the movie. It's a little tour of the found footage office. Here we go. Yeah, I've been to their office. It's crazy. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's a museum. It's inspiring. It's a stunning collection of videotapes. It's, uh, one, one could say too much. Well, we'll take you around to the different categories we have here. This is These religious. two walls are all religious. It, yeah. This one is called, hey kids, it's Jesus. And then it's animals down here. Whiskers, the cat with the magical attitude. Martial arts, self-defense, then we go into holidays and Christmas. Kenny and Corky singing nothing for Christmas. So there's a lot of videos about how to be a better gambler. Yeah, but... there's a lot of strategy in winning the lotto. Andy always puts himself on the cover of these videos. Well, sex sells. <laughs> this Michael's training video I actually stole on my wedding day. Then it segues into sexy, stuff like nude golf, nude yoga. Nude bowling party. And they're not good bowlers either. There's a sea of children's videos. It's basically a video so parents don't have to have the sex talk with kids. And guiding you through this, Howie Mandel. And then eventually we just had enough tapes that in 2004, we either were like, let's take this thing we do to entertain friends out of our living room and put it into a theater somewhere. Show. My name's Nick, this is Joe, this is Hi. the Found Footage Festival, and uh, what we do, if you haven't seen the show before, we, we travel around the country, we look for old VHS tapes, exercise videos, and other people's home movies, and, you know, stuff that wasn't meant to be shown in public, and then we show it in public, we've been doing it 15 years, and we have no backup plan, this is our career this now. This is all so, we're doing yeah. with our lives, this is it. All right. That's it. Oh. So it's coming soon, hopefully to a city near you. Uh, but we should say, even if it's not on city near you, it'll be on demand. So you can get it on Apple and uh, iTunes and Amazon and all that in, in May. I just love watching myself on screen. There's nothing That's... I love more than just like watching myself be funny on the screen. There's nothing uh -huh. better. That's... You, know, you yep. like it too? I do yep. too. I, I enjoy it a lot. Let's also, just say we, during the movies, we'll actually be in the bar at these Alamo draft houses. So if you go to the bathroom or go go out for some reason, you might just see us in there because uh, it's hard to watch yourself on screen. Also, I think in every single scene, I have a beer in my hand. Did you notice I had a beer in my hand in that one? Like, I don't Yeah, I don't know. Like the camera's on. I'm like, oh, I got to go grab a beer. It's like my <laughs> it's my accessory. I always Dumbo's feather. You have to have it all the time. I mean, yeah. Keep that in mind when you watch the movie, actually. Um, so, yeah, we hope count to see the, you there. Count the beers in my hands. Or if you did I, it at home, it could be a drinking game. Drink with Joe. Joe, you mentioned the, the – I like that. You mentioned the website. Here's a, 
I'll look at what that is. This is our buddy Glenn and his wife and, and colleagues put this together. So we call the screenings workout sessions. So you can see some of those on here. We have some, um, we have some uh, fake ones on there too. So, yep. You gotta, you go. Are uh, Steve and George, are you coming to any of the shows, maybe at the end of the tour in New York or. I hear there's a big Brooklyn one that everybody's talking about, right? There is. Uh, yeah, that's on, on the 24th. Yeah. I will definitely be there. And I cannot wait. Okay. We have more news about more New York screenings uh, in a minute that, that affects everybody watching. So we'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Do I know about this? Mm -hmm. I'm getting nervous. Yep, you okay. do. Uh, uh, we have time for Flying Windows? Yeah, we do. Get okay. into them. All right, here we go. Flying Windows this week. You know how a few weeks ago I played uh, flying VHS tapes? Every once in a while I like to stir the pot a little bit. You know, controversy is always good for get get the chatter going in this week in Flying Windows. And Reese said, uh, Reese from Australia wrote in and said, you could have avoided all that controversy if you just played my Knots Landing Flying Windows. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> I don't want to rock the boat this week. So, Reese. Yeah. Let's just come back you. down to Earth one week. Please. All right. Here we thank go. You. Look at all the different things that happen in the show. Look how heavily bordered they are. They're, looks like bevels, maybe, too. I think they're like frames. Rich people like, can get it. Yeah. Rich people can gonna... afford those. Look at that one. That's like a. Like a almost like yellow and green striped frame going by. A little bit of marbling going on. Yeah. Marbled frames. Man, so many things happen. Oh, yeah. In the town of Knott's Landing. So many different shaped windows. So many sexy things. things. Phone calls. So much overlapping. So much Larry Riley. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I love her. You guys like uh, right to left or left to right better? I prefer, uh, I prefer left to right because... One right. at a time, guys. One at a time. I prefer the way these are going because that's kind of the way you read. But in Japan, like how manga books are backwards, maybe they prefer the other way. The longest credits I've ever seen. I think I like a picture. Have them coming both ways in the front. You know, it's like which the next way gonna, which way is the next window gonna come from? Yeah. Wait, what well, did you say, Steve? I like a mixture. I don't like it just mm -hmm. to be all one. You I like get up bored. and downs and the, yeah, 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 you gotta yeah, throw it at every yeah. different direction, and that way I can play the game. Which way will the window come next? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like to think of myself as a pretty uh, liberal, open-minded guy, but when it comes to flying windows, extremely conservative. Yeah. Like when you bring out this VHS bullshit, no, I'm not into it. Extremely hard, alt, alt-right conservative. Uh, when it comes to <laughs> well, <laughs> that's one of those things that when you get older, you always start to go a little bit to the, yeah. to the right. conservative exactly. side when, in terms of when flying you're in college, <laughs> you'll take any window. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just happy to have them. Exactly. You'll take yeah. bubbles. Bubbles are the windows to the sea. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, all right. Well, it's time for uh, the main segment of the show. It's this weekend raviolis. All right. Take it away, Richie Triolo. Come on. Let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. All right. Uh, what do you got? You happy with yours this week? Yeah, I got some uh, got some all stars here. First of all, there's a video. I don't know if I have it here. It's called Pleasure Machines. Um, but uh, George, before you stroke your stubble too much, this is about pinball machines. It's a, <laughs> it's a fairly a fairly yeah. dry video about the history of pinball, but it featured some surprising celebrity cameos. So I was both interested in the history of pinball part and uh, liked the cameos. And there's also a movie out called, like, I think The Man Who Saved Pinball yeah. that I didn't much care for. But it's about uh, the guy who's that's based on is in this tape. So for those pinball fans, you might recognize him. I love 
love this Overlord song. Hot licks. These pinball games like awesome. There's something very rock and roll about pinball. There's energy in it. You know, the speed of the ball, the angles, the dramatic Flash? way of trying to hit a shot and the excitement about it. I mean, oh, pinball wow. is great. I don't think there's really any other game that compares to it. You know? I'm sorry. That's right, Slash. When I got the flippers in my hand, <laughs> it's just Thomas? like the baseball game. Oh, well, well. It rules the world. It's got total control. Doc That's Sham? what I do for a living. And when I'm in this game, this is what I do for a living. The machine knows when there's a serious player That's around. right, Slash. <laughs> yes. It's like hee-haw. Flipper control. Oh, yes. Flippers control just like the bat. To a futuristic carnival Good where you're taunted by a maniacal talking puppet. Who wants Remember to keep you out of fun his house? fun house? Is that the, yeah. yeah. Well, for one, okay, there hasn't been a cool pinball machine <laughs> in the last 11 years as far as rock and roll is concerned. Like, I think the last one, not to <laughs> plug Ted Nugent, but it was, it was Weekend Warriors. Anyway, um... It was Sony Signature's Kristen McKiernan's job to make sure that Robert De Niro was happy with his likeness as it appeared on the game Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And this is Robert De Niro. He played the lead role. His head moves back. He was and forth happy with that? In <laughs> gameplay. Right. And if you were to shoot a shot that you weren't supposed to be shooting at that time, he'll shake his head no. One of the voices you hear on the Baywatch game is David Hasselhoff. The show's co producer, Craig Cassizer, explains. The pinball engineers came out to record David's voiceover and um, were yelling stuff. David was yelling uh, lines they had written to go with the pinball game. And uh, he's yelling things like, save me, or hurry up, or multi-ball, multi-ball, or don't give up. It's like he said in the show. Yep. Multi-ball, yeah. multi-ball, don't give up. Uh, so overall, a pretty good video, but uh, yeah. That could have been a this week in celebrity bullshit. It There's could, so many, uh, great, yeah, especially the I, I like that it went from Slash to Frank Thomas. <laughs> it did. My favorite oh, kind of Joe, so good. Um, who else is in it? Joe Perry from Aerosmith is in it too, giving a testimonial and like yeah, they just found some celebrity pinball fans. Probably they all had their own. I think there was an Aerosmith and a Guns N' Roses pinball game. So and then I think Frank Thomas had one as well, like his own uh, baseball version of pinball. Did you say it was a uh, uh, it was a documentary or yeah. what was it? Uh, yep, documentary okay. from 1997 on VHS. So okay, yeah. I was gonna say we should uh, watch it, but I don't know. It's like an actual movie, right? But... Yeah, and it's a, I mean it's actually interesting. So you know maybe I'll post yeah. it on our uh, Rewindo Club for people who are curious. But those were the funny parts. Um, I'm going to do so. I have a uh, uh, a corner that uh, I haven't done in a while. I call it. This is how humans talk, right? Oh, good. Master, we love you. Do not go away. This is how humans. Right? I shall not talk much longer with you. <laughs> all right, so uh, this is, this is all about... Model T, Horn. <laughs> <laughs> this is about uh, classic stilted dialogue in, in videos. And this one is a... This is an infomercial out of Colorado for phone companions. Jeremy sent me this one, and when I saw it, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is how humans converse. This is a conversation that humans have. And, George, I don't think you featured this one on your 1-900-WAH segment that you no, did no. last year. I, um, I think I think it, it's probably not because everybody in the 900, 976 commercials I've shown, everybody talks exactly the way humans talk. Right, exactly. Well, not these – well, we'll see. We'll you, see. You yeah. can judge. Okay. It is. This is how humans talk, right? Well, another night out. I spent a fortune and didn't even score. Okay, I know what to do. For only two bucks a minute, I can call... Colorado Phone Companions, I'm Akia. Who is this? Oh, nice to meet you. What things do you like? Sure, I'd like to go into that. Sounds exciting. Wow, this is dynamite. <laughs> that was a very satisfying conversation. I certainly <laughs> enjoyed it. Pick up the phone and give us a try. I'll bet you'll like it, too. That's how humans talk, right? 
Yeah. You've all had that conversation before, right? Oh, without a doubt. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Daily. You each take turns saying all the words, and then the next person takes all the turns saying the words. <laughs> right. Right? You don't do a back and forth. One yep. person says all the words, and then the other person says all the words. That's right. how conversations. And I never acknowledge specific, specifics about what the other person said in my reply. <laughs> so. Yep. 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 Because you're a human. That's what we do. Yep. Uh, I'm so glad to see the segment back. And I noticed for the first time that each uh, word is in a different font in the intro and outro. So I that's a human's that right. Well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is one that was sent. We opened this on an unboxing episode, and I cannot for the life of me remember. I, this might have been a Bob Hedges send, uh, one of our viewers. This is called uh, Natural Vision Aerobic Eye Exercises. This was in contention for... Uh, the new exercise video montage in our volume 10 show didn't didn't quite make the cut because I think there's just too much of a it, it's just too much. But, Joe, I think you're really going to like this one. Um, I, I like it already. I mean, just based on the title, I'm mad at you for not including in the exercise. Video yeah, montage. it's very homemade, uh, which is what I like about it. It kind of has a uh, Pavel Goberman feel to it. So uh, and apparently it was trying to sell devices in a book about how to improve your vision without uh, glasses. So here we go. Congratulations on your purchase of Natural Vision's Secrets of Seeing Without Glasses or Contacts, the exercise program that will help you eliminate the need for prescription eyewear. My name is John App. I was a Marine Corps pilot in Vietnam. I several years ago decided to fly in the Air National Guard, but failed the vision test. By wearing these aerobic glasses and doing the exercises in this book, I was able to pass the flight physical as well as get rid of my glasses. Point A, place your thumbs on the rim of the eye sockets. That's right here, right on the top of the eye socket. The proper spot is just below the eyebrow at the inside <laughs> corner of the eye socket. There's a slight depression in the mail. bone at the correct yep. point. Press firmly. If you feel There's any pain like... at this point or at any subsequent point, this may I feel like in the low budget videos, they always like notice frequently. that it's all white in the background, so I'll just hang up tapestry or something pain when you to fill the space massage. and it ends up looking worse as seen on the bottom of page 17. <laughs> do not rub in the opposite direction as this may create wrinkles i mean this is like somebody's impression of donald trump right i mean this is like it looks like i don't know yeah. daryl hammered hammond as donald trump basically but yeah. that, those in the book those are the figures that they use 17. do not rub in the opposite direction as this may create wrinkles Exercise for the swinging exercise. I think that tapestry looks good. Body on your Next head. to the light switch, yeah. <laughs> your head on, I mean, this, this is a gift right, right here, isn't it? Somebody's got to clip this. <laughs> yeah. And turn your head on your shoulders as you swing. Up, then down, what, what then goes the... to the next exercise. Try to keep your body and face as relaxed as possible while exercising slowly, five times in each direction. Motion Ticketing to six. Blank. Move your eyes counterclockwise in the extremes of your eye socket five times. Follow your finger with your eyes. Repeat this with your other hand. Hi, I'm John Al. Hey, you can do that exercise with your cat. <laughs> yeah, you Wait, certainly. You and your cat could do that at the same time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> consider having them do this. One. I think you got like paw it a little hand. bit. Now, remember the uh, testimonial by the uh, pilot from the beginning? Uh, yeah. he, he makes an appearance in the actual tape. Oh, Does he crash through it. that wall? Uh, yeah, he says, oh, yeah, in, when he in crashes In a biplane. Oh. Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm John App, author of Secrets of Seeing Without Glasses or Contacts. And I've added this extra exercise for the viewers of the videotape. This is an exercise not yeah, found in the book, <laughs> Secrets of Seeing Without Glasses or Contacts, but added especially for video viewers is the use of a one-person trampoline for vision improvement. Thank you for having joined us in this video. I hope that you keep up with the exercises so you can regain your normal vision. Here at Natural Vision, we wish you good luck and good sight. That's it. So, yeah, the guy giving the testimonial at the beginning. Um, all right. For my thing, I'm going to do uh, my second ravioli. I'm going to do uh, a reenactment corner, which I don't have a graphic for that yet because, uh, yeah, I just 
completely forgot to do it. So, uh, but this is reenactment quarter. All these training videos, they always do the reenactments of what you shouldn't do, and those are always my favorites. Mm -hmm. And this particular one is a jewel training video. Nick, you remember? I think it was like volume, I don't know, six or something. We had a a, a training video montage. We included a jewel training video that we got from Todd Hansen, who was a, one of the editors at the Onion. He stole it from a break room. Uh, in Illinois, and I think Jewel is like a regional, like Illinois grocery store. And uh, Mark sent me this uh, Jewel training video that we've never seen before called okay. Customers First. And so what I want to do, I, I uh, parlayed a little game into this called, um, and again, I don't have the graphic, but it's going to be called um, Name That Acro Acronym. All right. Okay. So uh, let's just watch the opening uh, title sequence for uh, Jewel Customers First. And this is almost a toe tapper for me too. I included this like uh, on my list, but it didn't. Yeah, it didn't you make the that. tournament. Customers first. It's customers first. I love the driving design. Customers yeah. first. It's called that Memphis. Customers. Or... What's that? Isn't that graphic design style called like Memphis or something where there's oh, like confetti and eighties? I can't remember, uh, oh. but I do like it. Customers first. You're looking good in all you do. Making new friends the whole day through. It's customers first. You're a real pro at Jewel. Did you hear that swoosh? That was an extreme swoosh. Oh yeah. <laughs> We should do this week in swooshes because you hear that swo that same swoosh sound all the time. Is it I, uh, always attached to flying windows, or yeah, it always often is. it is. Yeah. I mean, I remember I think in uh, somewhere out of college, I bought a CD that was called uh, Swooshes and Whooshes, and it was we like, have it still. We yeah, have it still. I, I saw it the other day. Yeah, there's like there's like 120 of them on there. Yeah, so yeah. I wonder if that one is from that that same it compilation. Is. It definitely okay. is. I remember this one. Here we go. Listen again. The customer comes first. Now, anybody can say that, but what does it mean at Jewel? Let's start with the F. All right. What do you think the F is going to be? Fred, John, shout it out. Huh? John Frankenheimer. Okay. Friendly. No, I was going to say friendliness. Um, uh, no, you have to come up with your own things. Yeah. Okay. I'll say, um, uh, I don't know. Family. An F family? Oh, that's not bad. All right. F stands for Steve. friendly. Steve's up one. Well, here's a friendly situation. <laughs> See what you think. Hey, what was the name of that place? Uh, I can't remember, but uh, they were there together. <laughs> together? Hey, you should have sold your kids. Being friendly among yourselves is one thing. Ignoring customers is something else. All right, now we got I. Um, these are things you're supposed to do, right? Yeah, yeah. These, things, but then the reenactments are what they're not supposed to do. The things what you're supposed to do okay. aren't as fun, so it's all um, like bad reenactments. I want to go with inclusive. Okay. Oh, good one. I'll say uh, interview. Okay, George. An I word. Come on. Uh, imagine. Oh, no. That's or intro. intro. Whenever a customer moves into your no. lane, that's your cue to say something. You're supposed to be friendly, and you're supposed to be intro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Hi. Get that. How you doing today? Wait, wait, wait. This guy's too good. This guy's just... He's just a very meaty face. Who does he look like? He looks like a professional wrestler, maybe? The hair does. Oh, yeah. What was his name? Yeah. Hi, how you doing today? Hi, how are you? Hi, did you find everything you need today? How do you like this weather? Good morning, would you like a cart? See, that's a nice pin you're wearing. Oh, I see you picked one of my favorites here. Hi, Mrs. Martin, good to see you again. The next point we want to make is... Okay, so that was actually a reenactment of what you should do, but mm -hmm. I just like that sequence, so... R, quickly. Reliable. Review. Review. Steve. Uh, remember. React. React. Hey, wait a minute. That's not the sale price. It's supposed to be two forty nine. Oh no, not again! That's the third time this has happened to me today. I don't know why they can't keep these prices straight. 
I love this actress, by the way. She's like, great. She, she's like, she's like Fa Frances McDormand, like, mm -hmm. level, like, yeah. Now you're gonna have to wait until we get all this straightened out. Hey, you service desk, can you get somebody over here? That's what the. Okay, S. Yes. What do we got? Quickly. Satisfy. Okay, like I like that one. I have two, so I'm gonna wait for Nick to go. <laughs> uh, I'll go with um, strategizing. Uh, that's I'll, go, I'll go with sexuality. <laughs> I'm gonna drawer. go with safety over service. Was my other one. Safety over service. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I'm gonna go with safety. Okay. Here we go. S stands for in first, Damn but it. it's not always easy. It's sexual. Hey, mister, not so fast. <laughs> What's wrong? You see the sign? So what? Well, see? can you read it? <laughs> Don't you? You're not allowed in this lane. Wait, it's ten doing? items or less. Fewer. A smile can help a lot in handling like tough here. customer situations. If handled correctly, customers understand. <laughs> now we get to our final letter. All right, T. Well, final letter. Steve's up one nothing, correct? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Trust. Oh, Ooh, that's, that's good. good well, that's a good one. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Remember talent. THs too. Don't worry about. Don't yeah. forget about THs. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Talent. Yeah, I'm gonna say talent. Well, okay. you just gave me the answer. Thank, thank, thank them. Thankfulness, something like that. Oh, Steve. Thankfulness. All right, let's see if it's thank thankfulness. Them. <laughs> thank them. I don't know what the word is. T, which is for thank you. Yeah, sorry, Steve. Ooh. You still won, so but yeah. like, you, you kind of went out on a whimper there with thankfulness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. My last five were pretty uh, pretty bad because I gave two for S. So. Thankfulness doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Could I please have paper bags? I'm sorry, too, lady. I've already bagged them. You want paper bags? Please. <laughs> Here, you can have them. Shove them up your ass, lady. Hey, what's the bed? I'm done. Customers there we go. Flying window. It's customer first. Taco. It feels like I don't a think, taco. I thought I don't taco, think, yeah. I don't think that would have won the toe tapping tournament, though. I don't think they would have had the snowball's chance in hell. But it does sound like the one that we got from Todd Hansen because they go it's, customers first. It's, it's the same song. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. same song. Oh, it's, it's just a different part of it. Got it. It's the full song though. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. Those are our raviolis. What do we want to do next? You want to do some cyber videos? Sure. I think we have time for a few cyber videos. Let's get into them. Here we go. All right, I got to uh, give credit to uh, FuzzyMemories.tv. That's the Museum of Classic Chicago Broadcasting. They just find like old tapes of, of Chicago local TV and digitize them and put them online. And um, this one uh, was pointed out on our Discord that there's a great oh hello in this. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're collecting people are somehow surprised that a camera is on them uh, and before, even though they're hosting the video, they're surprised. This is a this is a classic. This guy is almost startled to death that he's on camera. Here we go. It's a commercial for a carpet store. Oh, hi. Caught me at work. I'm a Lincoln carpet installer. Have been for 20 years. Now, Lincoln gives me good carpeting and padding to work with. And they give me all the time I need to do the job right. And that's important to me because I take pride in my work. I'm proud to work for Lincoln, and you'll be proud of the work Lincoln does for you. When you're thinking, Lincoln, Lincoln, better carpeting. Well, let's call National 29000. National 29000. They don't, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? No. Tingles they or don't. old men. And, and Nick, you know I have a, a corner called This Week in Ohio. I feel like you're just kind of spitting in the face of all my corners here. Like that's, <laughs> that could have been a celebrity bullshit before, and now that could have yeah. been a this week in Ohio. I feel like you're just like pissing all over my corners right now. You're just, just well, flipping it out, just taking a big old long hot piss all over my. Uh, well, it's inten it's, in here. it's intentional. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. I fly in fly in the face of your rules about corners. Um, Steve, what do you have? Uh, I'm actually going to pivot today. I was going to play one of my jock shams, but since there's been so much talk about the toe-tapping tournament, 
I'm going to show the uh, the t- what's a tournament? Yeah, I'm not familiar. Tournament, with the tournament. tournament, guys. Yeah, there you go. There you must go. My, my mic must be malfunctioning. Didn't even recognize there the word. <laughs> Your mic yeah, malfunctioned. No what? Yeah. Um, I'm going to play the uh, my uh, third contender that no one ever got to see, and I will say I even went as far as to add the captain in it. You know, as a shameless plug, as like Joe did. So oh, here is my uh, sea captain from the sea Sizzler captain. Day. Got it. It's Sizzler too late for you to win, Steve. You know that, right? Well, I think I did know that. I don't. I honestly didn't think this would be. Uh, um, I'm gonna say the Sparks, the uh, Commodore, which I've been singing on stops even now. We have planted a family tree in NSS life, moving towards our future goals. It's never looked so bright. NSS life. Family matters. <laughs> Maybe it would have had a chance. I don't know. I yeah. definitely, made some, definitely with, made some mistakes during the tournament. With that <laughs> Nick Sea captain, they very well could have gone to <laughs> on to the next round. Yeah. I forgot that that ends with family matters, which, you know, it kind of even looks like it's a cityscape, like it would be the intro to the sitcom, sitcom Family Matters. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that sounds like an Otis. I bet that was an Otis. Uh, yeah. I should have done that instead of the Stouffer Hotel, but you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> You'll be kicking yourself all year until the next time. Uh, George, you, you want to go next? I can go next if you want to. Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Uh, we've been looking at a lot of PSAs over the last few months, but I find that some of the freakiest are slow burns from across the pond. Here are some freaky British PSAs. Oh. Yes. Three PSAs. British edition. Over a thousand people a year still get injured by fireworks. For parents to supervise children's activities during More than two thirds of them are children. Do you know where your child is in the weeks up to November the 5th? Out collecting? Getting fireworks from older children? It's like the Clockwork Orange house. Yeah, that's what I was Parents. thinking. <laughs> Where's your child tonight? Where's that boy? <laughs> is that one of the time of his life? <laughs> that's exactly. Where is, is he drinking Malaco down? Yeah, uh, with his droops. Yeah, yeah uh, slow burn. Did they have like, some vicious Please. fireworks or something? Like, uh, um, I guess I so. I, I mean, they getting... they have fireworks at Christmas with those crackers. I mean, that's a that's a version of an explosive. So uh... you just call everybody in England a cracker. No, <laughs> yes, oh. that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. I did a oh, uh, yeah. um a New Year's in Germany, and it was like the craziest. The kids were like setting off like what you'd go to a park to see here um, displays. And it was just in the middle of the street. They were flying by your head constantly. It was crazy. So, so the PSA, so England has PSAs the same aren't working. PSAs yeah. did not work <laughs> at all. Yeah. Yeah. This is one that may be of interest to, to everybody. It's just a worn out fridge. But to a child, it's a caravan, a ship, a castle, even a bed and a death trap. <laughs> Airtight and impossible to open from the inside. Monkey Brewster. Don't let an old fridge be a new danger to children. Take off the door or smash the lock. Or better still, ask your local council to take it away or tell you how to dispose of it. Before it kills a child. fridges <laughs> can kill. <laughs> and this one's just... Hit. Runs right into an old fridge. The last place in the world to leave a bottle is a beach. Yeah, they didn't show it, but I still, I cringed harder with that than I think any of the gross ones we've watched. Yeah. I, I, I don't think audiences like foot pain. Because, Nick, <laughs> we, we always play that uh, It Only Takes a Second video. It's you know, We play it at a lot of our shows. And there's a part where a foot goes on a nail and every just you could everybody yeah. screams during that part especially yeah foot pain nobody wants that 
Well, I mean, how can you tap your toe after that? It's, I know. it's a quality of life goes down. Exactly. Yeah, nobody it ruins your enjoyment toe. of tournaments. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm not doing IMGs this week. You know, I'm taking this month off from IMGs just because I've had so many cyber videos that have built up, and I just I'm excited about them, and I just want to get rid of them so I can focus on IMGs. So uh, this particular cyber video was sent in. Uh, uh, Cinematic sent this one in, and uh, it's called The Ascension. And Nick, I know that you're skeptical about a lot of things, like um, uh, <laughs> typically, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> psychics, you uh, um, Bigfoot, UFOs ghosts you Very tend to not believe plan. in those things right but i think this one hmm. and, it, and if you don't know like I, please explain to me how this guy does this if okay. you can understand this, to be is proven wrong. <laughs> this, is a, this is a documentary online that uh cinematic sent me i don't know how many views it had i forgot to look but uh it's one of the more bad shit new age things that i've ever seen Fantastic. so uh yeah here we go here's my cyber video My name is Michael Shane, and I'm what you would call a uh, trans-physical phenomena medium, which means I'm able to bring through, using the energies of ectoplasm, physical objects from uh, an, an adamant like gemstones to master teachers and spirits that want to come and speak to us. The man has just a, a very strong intuition. A constitutionalist. <laughs> That's his lower third of Jack Flynn. He looks like he has a strong constitution. <laughs> and he's also a Patriots fan. Uh, so I think it's like, Bob from yeah. Twin Peaks there. but <laughs> I think it's uh, future Steve Lawrence. I mean, he's a Patriots fan, right? Oh, yeah, it's true. And Steve, you're a constitutionalist. All right. Heck yeah. He's just a, a very strong intuition. And beyond that, he works with the masters. Okay. So it's a two-pronged situation. At the age of 28... Um, I headed to California and ran into an old spiritualist teacher. Uh, his name is Weston Bailey. And he did a lot of healing with me. And during those healing processes, Eight, nine, 10, 11, things 12, started 13, happening. 14, 15, 16. So here, this is called an apportation event. <laughs> okay. And, uh, what do you think? What do you guys think is going to happen at the apportation <laughs> event? I just, I, I'm still in quiz mode, so I'd just love to know what, uh, what you guys think is going to happen at the. I think he's going to pull a gem from another world. Okay. I think he's going to channel some kind of uh, ancient, ancient spiritual leader. Okay, George, you got anything? Uh, Weston Bailey is going to emerge from his ass. <laughs> Weston <laughs> Bailey. I thought about cutting that part out. I was like, no, I want to include Weston Bailey. All right, here we go. Here's the apportation <laughs> event. <laughs> spend a lot of time in the bathroom I, yeah I, I guess you don't have to get dressed up for these apportation events <laughs> shorts you, is you fine just, you just wear whatever you're wearing <laughs> apportation casual did it tore off the thing mm -hmm. did he have port yet he's apporting right now <laughs> spitting up gems Gems are coming out of his mouth. Explain it, Nick. Explain it. <laughs> I'd love to hear what you think. Oh, yeah. A ring came out of his nose. <laughs> this goes on for a long time. I cut it down, too. So that's and what opens up. What? And 11 is your change. <laughs> <laughs> the, the vortex that brings through the objects so you're not going to want to touch that uh, you're going to yeah. want to wash your hands after it's that ring yeah. cleaner objects, which are with an look, at, look at all those people there mm. he, has, he has more followers than we do and it's in <laughs> maui too so everyone travels <laughs> which are with an energy of the heart consciousness the heart an energy with the heart consciousness mind jonathan okay so this is afterwards they they distribute the, the gems that he just spit up <laughs> from saint germain Matt Groening? Listen to your heart, and you'll hear the messages that he will be giving you here in the next few days. And then all the things that don't make sense will start to make sense. I mean, I feel like that's what I would do if I were like 
uh, kind of improvising, like, and then yeah. all the things that uh, don't make sense that it will eventually. Then make they sense. will. Uh, if you just <laughs> stick with it, they will make sense. So. He does like three other things in it that is more like what magicians do. You know, it's more yeah. like David David Blaine tricks than anything. That one's a David Blaine trick. He regurgitates a lot of things. <laughs> do, you, do you think he actually regurgitated it, or do you think I think it was like he, had one he of... swallows them and regurgitates them? That's what I, I think, think. He just keeps them in his cheeks. I don't yeah, know. It's possible. Yeah, I get just sign this. Yeah, it could uh, be. I don't know. I'm all I know is I'm a follower now. I'm so. a believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. I'm on yeah. a plane to Maui tomorrow. Sorry, the chopping <laughs> steel tour is off. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's get into a few nice things real quick here. Here we go. Oh, yeah. First nice thing is I just want to say that the uh, new Bastard Tapes, the podcast, the audio podcast uh, by Tim Harrod is out. This one is called Crazy Covers 2. Um, they're all cover songs that I've never heard before. Some incredible stuff. Liza Minnelli has one I've never heard of in there. Uh, and there's one in here by a guy. Um, his name, he's from Sweden. His name is Eilert P- Pilarm, and he does uh, Jailhouse Rock. Uh, from Elvis. So uh, here's a, there's actually footage of him performing this uh, live somewhere. So here's a little bit of that Swedish cover of Jailhouse Rock. <laughs> he looks exactly like Elvis. Yeah, you know, Tim in the podcast describes him as uh, high school principal good looks, I think he says. <laughs> So, all right, let's hear it. Not go. only looks, but sounds exactly like Elvis. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, I think Swedes and Scandinavians in general have a tough time with the letter J, so it's Yale House Rock. Uh, okay. Everybody <laughs> the, in the Yale yard. The guy in the background looked more like Elvis than the guy in the foreground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the guitarist was more Elvis-y. Um, I want to show this thing. So we did a show in Arlington, Virginia, of a couple of on Thursday and Friday, last Thursday and Friday. And uh, Farmer Dan came out. Always get to see him, and he always brings his great gifts. Um, he brought one thing that I want to show on Saturday morning cartoons. But uh, this, he brought, do you guys know what this is? A reference to, he made shirts for all of us, all four sizes. I heart Coco. Nick, you know the answer to this. But mm-hmm. Stephen George, do you remember what this is a reference to? Uh, Ice T's wife? <laughs> how, do you know, how do you know Ice T's wife's name? He has a shirt. Coco. He has a show yeah. called yeah. Ice yeah, I, well, I, I have absolutely no idea. I feel like I'm going to kick myself once you tell me. You definitely will. I'm going to show you the video right now. Do you remember? this particular video when you were getting your uh, colonoscopy i think i played it for you it's the highlights from the cut the cheese to cut out <laughs> colorectal cancer 2008 video. ringing a bell now concert pianist with tangles remember, remember the world's greatest photo right there yep <laughs> <laughs> this guy blinded by the flash <laughs> In the back of another person's head, and then the the the, the red ghostly display. apparition, and yeah. that's a polyp. That's the world's <laughs> greatest photo right there. I'm gonna declare it. <laughs> Just so I heart uh-huh. the shirts. Put on a calendar, playing around inside the colon, hamming it up, having some fun. It's a pretty good picture too here. <laughs> I also like this good. one too. All the framing's perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Two people having a conversation on the left. All right, so that's uh, the <laughs> the cut the cheese event, and uh, <laughs> so he made this. But Farmer Dan always goes the extra mile, and he looked at other videos by that company or whatever the organization and he saw the back of the shirt and he freeze framed it and then he screen grabbed it <laughs> and he, he has this is the back of the shirt now could he see that this is what the actual oh, back of the yeah. shirt looked like 
this is what it actually looked like. That was their website and everything. And uh, the stick figures with little uh, intestines showing or Collins, I guess. Yep. Um, and yeah. uh, I don't know. Good cause. Bat. Terrible name. Good cause. Uh, I don't know. I guess we should support them. If you them. think I'm not yeah. wearing that to my next uh, colonoscopy, you <laughs> we all need wrong. to. Yeah. We all need to. Yeah. That could be our next shirt. Might, it's hard to explain. I might have yeah. to go sooner. They're supposed to say you don't have to come back in five years. Now they got that shirt. Might have to yeah. go next year. Just I an know. excuse. Yeah. Dress, you're dressed yeah. up. Yeah. I, I got four of them here. So, um, all right. Uh, thank you, Farmer Dan, for hooking us up. Hey, thank real you, quick, Dan. real quick. I want to do a that and done. Let's, uh, we've just been sitting in the queue for a long time. This okay. This is a viewer request. <laughs> That's it. That and done. Right there. Okay, so this is, uh, we play a lot of stuff. We have a lot of inside jokes on here, and people are often confused by stuff. And they say, uh, so, so uh, we, we encourage you to write in and, and tell us, or ask us uh, questions about, because we love to replay videos. It's easy, uh, it's easy for us. It's easier, uh, yeah. Cause we, cause, yeah, exactly. So Trash Boat sent an email, said, first time caller, long time subscriber. I have failed to locate a certain clip from one of the found footage videos, which might be, about a year old at this point. Can you help? It was from some kind of work-related safety video, and the narrator narrator's why can't I read? Narrator's ominous line was, "It all starts with a bad idea." Specifically, I'm looking for that one line of audio and nothing else really. It was most likely not from "Shake Hands with Danger." That's where my mind went. Mm -hmm, me uh, too. "Shake Hands with Danger." He said, "Although I may have somehow missed that one line when trying to watch it on YouTube." So. Um, I think it's from this one called Safety on the Job. Nick, I thought it was from like Stop and Think, and I rewatched mm -hmm. Stop and Think, which is a, another great Federated safety Mutual. video. Yeah, but there's no narrator in that one. So then I thought about the Safety on the Job that somebody stole from a workplace in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and uh, he doesn't say that exact line. But tell me if this is it. Okay. All right, here's Safety on the Job. Reckless individuals give no thought at all to the consequences of what they do. They seem unaware of what is right or wrong behavior in the workplace. What are these days, they may willfully ignore established rules and procedures, no deliberately disobeying them. Go! Darn it, Slick, get out of here! Oh, a little touchy today, aren't we? You want touchy? I'll show you touchy. Hey, 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 cool down, cowboy. Now, we don't want anybody to get hurt, do we? Hey, aren't you going to put your jacket on? Nah, it's too hot in here already. Hey, Slick! Wait, wait, wait. What, what's that sweatshirt? Is this a t-shirt that's hard to explain? American Athlete? Is that what it says? I think it says American Athlete? I think it says American Athlete. Yeah, he's wearing that to work, too. <laughs> uh, with, a, with a collared shirt underneath. Yeah, collared underneath. That's what Slick's wearing. Here already. Hey, Slick! It's not too inconvenient. You want to put on your jacket and get over here? Aye, sir. Ah, sir. That's it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's it or not. But huh. uh, it, that was yeah. the closest line of a narrator other than, I, I feel like it is shake hands with danger, but uh, we, okay. we have to look closer. But that's the... That's the so, only thing I could think of. Yeah, so. it all starts with a bad idea is the line or something close to that. So, all right, if that's not it, please let us I know thought, and we'll try again. I thought it was again. close to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was close to that. So, uh, all right. yeah, Trash Boat, let us know. That and it may be done. Um, uh, EP <laughs> mode this week. EP mode, we're going to watch Sasquatch, the evidence mounts uh, with George. Uh, more, uh, I guess, cryptid videos from uh, southeastern Ohio. Hmm. Yeah, we brought time. on we brought on George because he's a obviously a Bigfoot expert, right? <laughs> and and I spent most of the time trying to get one of the AI programs to draw a picture of Bigfoot driving Bigfoot the the muscle car. Oh, and, uh, could, couldn't get it to work. But um, that's why you weren't paying attention in that episode. Uh, by the way, if you want those right. bonus episodes each week, you just go to patreoncom slash festival and you get tons. How many EP modes are there? 171 bonus episodes that you can go back and catch yes. up on. 24 bonus and they're clips. All so good. You get to vote on everything. So yeah, it's worth a shot. Just give it a shot for a couple of weeks. 
Um, what else we got? Uh, Foxy unboxing this Friday. Are we still doing those? Are they still going? I don't up, know. Actually, up? I don't know if they're still doing. Okay. It. Yeah. Um. All right. Um, just to maybe list this. tune in Friday, maybe and cancel to... all your plans. <laughs> cancel all your plans and watch Foxy unboxing yes. this Friday. Here's yeah. the uh, uh, the news. So we mentioned we're going to be on tour with Chop and Steel, L.A., San Francisco, Denver, Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin, Austin, Raleigh, Manhattan, and Brooklyn. Then Volume 10 of Found Footage Festival kicks right off. No break. We're right to Calgary at the Calgary Underground Film Festival and then Schenectady, New York. Here's the thing. We normally don't book this early, but on August 19th, we booked Volume 10 uh, in Brooklyn at the Bell House, right across from our office in Gowanus, Brooklyn. And people on Discord have talked about possibly making this into a Melinda Con, getting a block of hotels, Ooh. taking, um, you know, uh, just making a whole weekend out of it because that's a Saturday, August 19th. We could do maybe another open house at the office. Um, 100%. George performed music last time. Um, so that's the idea. Mark your calendars for August 19th. We, I know a few people are already either driving from far away or flying in for it. So it's going to be a big one. That was so fun last time. Last time that was like, yeah, it was like right before the pandemic, wasn't it? It was like 2019. Yeah. We did the new show, and we got to meet all the Melindas from all around the place. Like Ross from St. Louis came up, and uh, yeah, everybody came from uh, far away to to the or to this dumb thing that we do. So yeah, definitely come out and, <laughs> and see the VHS tapes uh, in person. And George, are you gonna sing a song for everybody? Sure. All right. Yeah. Um. Too cool. Uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah. And by the way, Volume Ten has gotten a great response so far. I'm always nervous, mm -hmm. like taking the new shows out. And Volume Ten has been uh, across the board. Everybody's been enjoying it. So it's always a work in progress. But uh, so each show you'll see will be a little bit different. But by August 19th, we'll have uh, the best version of it ready to go. So uh, yeah, come see us along the way. Uh, shall we get out with a fun video by Paris and Stereo? Yeah, I think we should. It, but so Paris and Stereo, but before we do, this is another clown related video. So we're starting with clowns. We're ending with clowns. Yep. I, I was I this popped in my head. Are there any updates, Nick, on the box of clown dolls that we sent to the clown doll museum in Nebraska? I'm that afraid you, not. You asked, you asked all the Melindas, send us in your clown dolls. And people like took them off their shelves and they mm -hmm. uh, packed them into a box. They shipped them out to us. And now there's nothing to show for it and it's just kind of yeah. embarrassing so uh, do you well, follow up I, you you're, them? you're implying this and you're right it's my fault um uh, this is your idea this is 100 percent your idea and it's just been stagnant yeah, it's a it's a small museum without a lot of resources so we're waiting on them to build the new wing and they haven't been able to do that the pandemic wasn't exactly good to clown doll museum so or to answer your question it's gonna be a while can you can you just make one more phone call uh, <laughs> sure I'll bother Please. these. I'll bother these elderly volunteers one more time, but just because you asked. Um, Otherwise, so, I mean, they, 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 yeah, okay. Paris and Stereo uh, has done so many great remixes for us over the over the years, and he just recently re we requested this, and he recently remixed Blueberry the Clown, this uh, safety clown from Portland, Oregon. Uh, he sent us a remix. I made a little video, so we're going to go out on that. And uh, until next week, we'll we'll see you on the road, and we'll be right back right after these uh, right for these words. Yeah, come out and see us. Uh, Chop and Steel screening all across the country. Chopandsteel.com. And here's the thing: if we had been prepared, we could have done better. Meet some Melindas and uh, eat some good food and play some fun games. Go to Flushing Friends and Gaming at gmail.com. My nose isn't full of yuck anymore. I give this old Western thriller five Mickeys. Golly, what you should. Hi, everybody. How are you today? My name's Blueberry the Clown. <laughs>
When we return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all, that's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it, that it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a My not there for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Curiodal. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Nice, nice. <laughs> Goodbye. Jim's coins in Hilda.